it's unlike anything I've ever experienced. It's so hard to describe. Feeling a baby kick is definitely one of the wildest things to actually feel that movement inside of you and think, wow, I am carrying another whole life right now and that your body is providing everything that that person needs to grow and survive in the world. And then as soon as they're out, it's like, okay, I'm really a mom, this is really my baby. And we just made it through this crazy experience together. It's a love like I've never known. I always knew that I wanted to be a mom and have at least two children, and so it's just been the center of my world ever since. You being good. As a labor and delivery nurse, I knew group B strep was something that we tested women for. I knew it didn't seem super uncommon to be positive for it, but I did not understand how detrimental it could be to a newborn until it happened to my son. Everything was normal at first with my pregnancy, with my delivery, and it was the next day that he just became very fussy, very irritable, and it was that evening, actually, that he had his first seizure. So he started having seizures over and over again, so that was when they decided to airlift him to a hospital that has a NICU, and it was roughly 12 hours after they drew his blood culture at our hospital that it was growing group B strep. I was initially confused because I had tested negative twice, and so I, that was not even on the list of things that I thought might be happening and might be causing him to have this episode. And I kind of felt alone, even with all my family there, just because I thought, well, I've done this, and now we don't know if he's going to survive this, because at that point, we weren't sure. GBS is group B strep. It's a bacteria and it's really common. It actually lives on our bodies and about a third to sometimes more of the population is colonized at any given time. And it doesn't cause harm in most people. Of course, if you're very young, particularly a newborn infant, it can unfortunately enter the blood, the bloodstream, or even the brain and cause bad disease, including blood infections and meningitis or brain infections. There was one instance when I was a practicing pediatrician working in the hospital wards and a baby came in seizing and they took the baby to the MRI machine to look at the baby's brain and unfortunately there was extensive damage. And the baby had been well just the day before. The baby's mother had been screened for GBS disease and was actually negative at the time of pregnancy. And when the baby came in, the baby was GBS positive. And that's a really hard thing to tell the mother. It's hard not to replay that in your head over and over again and think, how could I have prevented this? Because ultimately, I don't have any lasting effects from everything that happened, but it's something that Colt's gonna live with for the rest of his life. When I was pregnant with Colt and we would think about what his life would be like, we definitely thought, like at this point at age five, we thought we would have you know, a kindergartner that was playing t-ball and talking and doing all of the things that you would think that a child this age would be doing. He's still mostly nonverbal. We had to realize he's going to have limitations and he's gonna have things that he's gonna require extra support with. And that is from everything that happened in the beginning. We're blessed that he's alive and we're blessed that he's doing as well as he is. Everything that he accomplishes is wonderful and we're so proud but also grieving what we thought he would be able to do as well. I'm sorry. Mothers get exposed to different viruses or bacteria through the course of their life, and their body builds an immunity to it and remembers it. And those memory antibodies get passed along to babies to protect them through the first months of life where their own body is not making antibodies. 
So Pfizer's maternal immunization programs looks to capitalize on the antibodies that mothers could naturally develop from exposure to infections and make them even higher. What we do with vaccines is that we can potentially boost antibodies in mothers. And so when they pass that antibody through the placenta, they're passing a massive load of antibody that potentially protects the baby through a longer period of time so that they don't get infection. Maternal immunization has been used for flu, for COVID, for tetanus, for pertussis. And now we're emerging into new areas to see if we can also protect other infant infections with maternal vaccination. If you look at history, the three things that have had the biggest impact on global health are clean water, nutrition, and vaccines. I've been working on microorganisms now for about 30 years. Now I spend all of my time as head of vaccines research and development at Pfizer. Early on, when vaccines were first developed, they were mainly made out of whole cell pathogens. Over the years, things have evolved, and now we have other ways to make vaccines that provides more flexibility and also means that vaccines can be given to more people. So when we develop vaccines, we have three main tools within our toolbox that we use. One is what we call a subunit vaccine. One is an mRNA vaccine and the other is a polysaccharide conjugate vaccine. All of them have the role of taking a piece of the pathogen that doesn't cause disease on its own as a template for our immune system to make the vaccine. Different pathogens require different approaches. We identify what the right technology is for the pathogen that we're looking at. We're really applying some of our new innovative technology to help move these vaccines forward at a more rapid pace with urgency so that we can help to prevent some of those severe diseases from happening. Today, Colt is a goofball. He's a class clown. Everybody thinks he's hysterical. He loves to make people laugh and to laugh and be silly. He's healthy and he's happy, but he is going to have struggles and we're gonna to have to help him through those things. I hope to hear him speak. I can't wait until Colt can come up and tell me some of the things that are going on in his head. He's got a great personality, definitely. And that's something that we're very thankful for because I know it could definitely have gone a very different way.